Hello everybody, this is Awesome Nutrition and welcome to a little tasty morsel of nutritional information. We're going to talk today about the importance of protein. I've been asked a few really good questions lately about the importance of protein, why it's so important. Also, if people are getting enough protein in their diet and if they're not getting enough protein in their diet, how they do get enough protein in their diet. So over the next few slides, we're going to go through the importance of protein and hopefully answer some of these burning questions for you. So let's start everyone. Protein is not just for building big muscles. This is a really important thing to understand. Eating a lot of protein is not going to make you like this guy here. He's pretty buff, isn't he? And it says here guys that there is substantial evidence that supports the increased consumption of high quality protein to achieve optimal health outcomes. And that's true. Protein's really important. We're going to go through the functions and the benefits of protein in a moment. But just a note on this, especially for women. Women get a little bit concerned sometimes when we ask when we tell them about increasing uh, their pro their protein in, in, in intake. You're not gonna get big and bulky by eating a lot of protein. In order to get like this guy here, you basically need, yes, to eat a lot of protein, but you also need to train a lot and very heavily with a lot of weight to stimulate your muscle. And then also you need to eat in quite a big calorie surplus as well. So uh, to give the muscle energy to grow. So when we look at weight loss diets and maintenance diets, actually when we train with, with, good, with a good amount of weight, with resistance training, and we, eat reg and we eat a lot of protein, if we're not in a calorie surplus, we're not actually going to get big muscles. We're actually going to get leaner. We're going to get smaller. We're going to burn through um, a lot of our fat tissue as we diet um, and yeah we as I say we get smaller from training and eating more protein rather than bigger we get bigger muscles by eating in a calorie surplus so basically eating high protein and high carbohydrate and um, that's how we get it so just to put that to, uh, to 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 bed really so that people can stop worrying too much about increasing their protein intake and ending up looking like this guy here the functions of protein, other than building muscle, dietary protein has many functions uh, for the transport of hemoglobin in your red blood cells. So your hem hemoglobin is the protein in your blood that makes it red, uh, and that's um, and it's important for uh, for the transport of your red blood cells. It's important for enzyme functions. It's important for your hormones. Really important for your hormones. In fact. Uh, it's really important for your immune function. It's important for fluid balance, like fluid retention or, or less fluid retention. It's good for your energy balance, really good for that. And it's also, of course, it's good, uh, important for uh, for, struct for structural, for your, for, your, for your skeletal muscle. It also has a lot of benefits, as well as multiple functions. Dietary protein also has a lot of health benefits. Uh, again, it's really important for your immune function. It's important for healthy hair and skin, or hair and skin, as I would say. And it's important for weight loss. It's really important. Well, it's, it's not important, but it does increase satiety. So it makes you feel fuller for longer. You've probably heard that a lot, but it really is true. It has a high thermic effect of food. So basically, this means that when we eat something and we digest, digestion of food burns calories. It takes energy in order to do that. Now, we're not talking a lot of food here. We're not talking a lot of calories here, sorry. Uh, it's just a slight increase in your calorie burn as you as you digest a meal. But protein creates the highest thermic effects or the highest calorie burn. Uh, so it's, um, it, is, it is good for that. But we're not talking any kind of calorie burn as in for lo lo losing weight or burning fat or anything like that. And it's also good for muscle retention, as we just said as well. So going through these, a couple of these benefits, guys, um, increased satiety. So protein is well known to satisfy a hunger for long periods of time. Higher protein diets improve satiety and lead to greater reductions in body weight and fat mass compared to regular protein diets. So when we put somebody on a weight loss diet, we will increase their protein intake. Um, and it says here that the that consuming regular amounts of protein as little as 20 grams per serving 
can also limit spontaneous energy intake like or, or snacking basically so this is the study that they did here um if you wanted to have a look at it but yeah this is basically um the fact that protein increases satiety is basically why we put people on weight loss diets we increase their protein intake looking at muscle retention as well so again we're not just looking at diets here all the time but this it, it, it is a focus for most people during periods of weight loss or fat loss because weight loss and fat loss is actually different we can lose weight very quickly fat loss takes a little bit longer we can lose weight by uh, and gain weight just by eating if you eat a meal and you go and weigh yourself after you've eaten the meal compared to before you've eaten the meal you will weigh heavier but that doesn't mean that you're fatter that you've put fat on it's just that you weigh heavier there's food in your gut so you weigh heavier uh, so that is uh, that is different weight loss and fat loss is different which is important to understand uh, so it says during periods of weight loss and fat loss it's important to preserve lean body mass and muscle tissue during the process so that we're burning fat and not muscle when we're dieting and in order to achieve this higher intakes of protein are recommended during these weight loss periods so as we said so we're burning more fat rather than muscle tissue and retaining the muscle that we have during a weight loss stroke fat loss diet also guys just a little bit here on we'll come to this age related sarcopenia in a second it says after many scientific studies analysis it has been shown that high protein diets so between 16 and 45 percent of your total daily calorie intake creates greater weight loss lower bmi overall so your body mass index will 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 decrease over time it will lower your waist circumference and it will also lower your blood pressure. So scientific studies. This was the this was one of the studies here that sh um, that they uh, that they did to uh, to get these results. Uh, again, if you wanted to check it out, your uh, and then over here, guys, it talks about higher protein intakes may also prevent age related sarcopenia. So as we get older, age related sarcopenia is basically the age related illness that's predisposes older adults to frail tape disability and loss of autonomy due to the progressive and generalized loss of skeletal muscle mass and strength uh, it's it's kind of inevitable that this happens as we get older it's age related so it does happen but the more that we train and exercise with resistance training to stimulate your muscles to to grow and retain the muscle mass that you have um that's really beneficial so that, as we say here feed and train your grandma like a bodybuilder so as we get older we do need to train a little bit more and a little bit harder than we do when we're younger unfortunately and um and yes and we need to make sure that we're intaking a an adequate amount of protein as well to prevent or to hold off age-related sarcopenia so one of your questions here is was am i getting enough protein so looking at protein one gram of protein is equal to four calories yeah so that's um that's the basic maths behind it um very very simple and what we've got here guys is just a a scale of protein intake so um, 0.8 grams per kilo of body weight is what that's showing is um, or below that you would actually be quite protein deficient so going back to the the functions and the benefits if we are protein deficient those functions and those benefits those functions would start to decline and those health benefits you won't, you wouldn't be getting those health benefits from this amount of protein so it is quite important that we look at how much we're eating um, and um, and try and increase it or um, maintain it at a really good level a lot of us guys i would say when i first look at somebody's diet uh, when i'm working with a weight loss client or um, doing nutritional consultations I do find that people are quite deficient in protein a lot of the time in their regular diet. Not necessarily as low as this, 
but I do find that people don't get enough protein in the diet and it's something that I always focus on first to try and increase and people really struggle to get enough protein in um especially people who are vegetarian now that's not a that's not a problem if you're vegetarian we're going to cover that in a moment um but it is a little bit harder to get enough protein in if you are a vegetarian also the the quality of the protein is a little bit different um from vegetarian from a vegetarian diet but what we're looking at when we do um when we do look at people's protein in, in, intake to take them from here to a more optimal range we then look at um, at the protein intake between 1.2 grams and 1.6 grams per kilo of body weight. So that's that's the optimal um, area here, just for general just for general health. Um, as it says here, guys, it says current evidence indicates that um, indicates of high quality. Pro oh, that's what. Oh, I should actually be right. That I'm very sorry. Current evidence indicates that intakes of high quality protein. Oh no, it's right. Um, in the range of at least 1.2 to 1.6 per kilo of body weight is an ideal target for achieving optimal health, okay? So that's something that to, um, to, to keep in mind, and that's where we want most people to be, is around here. Now, going higher than that, so two kilograms or more, is optimal also, but more for muscle building and also retention. So going back to the age-related sarcopenia portion, if we are... In, uh, if we are getting a little bit older, a little more mature in our years, then we would probably look at increasing your protein up a little bit higher, as we said, uh, tr tr uh, feed and train your grandma like a bodybuilder. So we would give them more exercise, more weight bearing exercise, and we would feed them a little bit more protein to help muscle retention um, and a little bit of extra muscle building as well. Also, this is the area that bodybuilders would be in as well so there would be two grams per kilo of body weight or more sometimes up to three or four grams per kilo of body weight now that's a lot of protein but they would need it if they are trying to build a lot of muscle and what do we mean by high quality protein guys so we're talking about complete protein so high quality protein is complete protein Complete proteins contain all of our essential amino acids, which is basically what protein is made of. Protein is made of, of a string of amino acids, and the those uh, those amino acids, the way that they um, are in that chain, uh, creates different kinds of protein. So complete proteins contain all essential amino acids in adequate amounts, and basically. Um, these are all animal-based protein sources. So your chicken, fish, um, beef, eggs, and things like that. They're all animal-based sources of protein, and they're all complete proteins, which is high-quality protein. Now, it's not to say that incomplete proteins and plant-based proteins are um, not high-quality. They do really still count. However, it does say here... Incomplete proteins are deficient in at least one amino essential amino acid, so we're not getting we're not getting all of them from incomplete proteins, and these are usually plant based sources of protein. So, in order to get enough, in order to get complete proteins from a vegetarian diet, it just says that combining food sources is important for vegetarians. A mixed diet will do this as you will get different essential amino acids from different sources. So the fact that you are a vegetarian, that's absolutely fine. You don't need to worry about not getting enough protein. It's basically that you just need to make sure that you have a very varied and mixed diet in order to get enough essential amino acids to create complete proteins in the process. So as we mentioned earlier, guys, you can work out your protein requirements using this equation here. So your body weight in kilos times that by a number between 1.2 and 1.6. So for an example here, if someone is 70 kilos, it doesn't matter if you're male or female. If somebody is 70 kilos, excuse, excuse me, we'll times that, say we take 1.4 and that would be 98 grams of protein. And it says here, guys, that your this number can be adjusted depending on your activity and your lifestyle. If you're a little bit more active, you can probably afford to 
um, take in a little bit more protein. If you're not so active, probably keep it around the lower range. That'd be absolutely fine. And if you're unsure, still speak to your nutrition coach for advice. So you can always come to me and ask me for advice on this, on what number to choose. So once you have your number, we're taking the example here of 98 grams of protein, you can then aim to consume that amount of protein per day for your optimal health. So that's it basically. Uh, you would then go away and you would consume that amount of protein per, per day and you should be absolutely fine. But 100 grams of protein, so a protein source, does not equal 100 grams of protein. Now that's quite confusing, all right? So, but don't stress, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, show you some slides here that's going to clear that up a little bit. But yeah, basically, if you take 100 grams of a protein source, so say 100 grams of chicken, which is the easiest protein source that everyone goes to, that chicken, 100 grams of protein, sorry, 100 grams of chicken doesn't contain 100 grams of protein, right? So if we look at the next slide here, I've listed a couple of things here for you. And you can, um, there's a PDF version of this, guys, as well, so you can take this away um, with you and you can have this as a, as a resource. But basically, what I've listed here, these are for um, non-vegetarian diets. And we're going to come to vegetarian diets in a moment. So the following serving sizes of these um, protein sources all contain 25 grams of protein. I've also included the calorie content uh, for your convenience or your interest as well. We're not going to worry too much about calories. But basically, 110 grams of chicken contains 25 grams of protein. And if you look at um, salmon, so 100 grams of salmon contains 25 grams of protein. Four whole eggs contain 25 grams of protein and so on. Um, your, um, the easiest way to get protein in though, guys, if you look at this here, is 30 grams of whey protein powder. Don't be scared of protein powders. Um, a lot, a few people have asked me about that as well. Again, protein powders are associated with the gym and bodybuilding. Please don't worry about protein powder. They're very safe. Uh, if you get some nice, um, some nice flavored ones, they're not too artificial. They're really... They're really tasty. They're a great way to get extra protein into your diet for very, for a, a small amount. So you're only having 30 grams. So like one scoop of whey protein powder uh, is 25 grams of protein, which is about 30, 30 grams compared to eating four whole eggs or 120 grams of steak. If you are missing a little bit of protein by the end of the day or you want to boost it in the morning, a quick scoop of protein powder in some water or a smoothie or something like that is an absolutely excellent way of getting extra protein into your diet. And please don't be scared of consuming protein shakes. It's really not, as we discussed at the beginning of the slides, uh, it's not going to make you big and bulky. It's just a really good way of getting extra protein in. So um, take a look at this, guys. Uh, your serving sizes and uh, all here contain 25 grams of protein. So what the point of this slide was, if you've got, say, 98 grams of protein per day, that's, say, 100 grams, if I choose, say, four of these, that would be 100 grams of protein. So if I had, uh, if I had 30 grams of protein in the morning for my breakfast and then at dinner time, I had 110 grams of chicken. And then at dinner time, I had a little bit of steak, 120 grams of steak. And maybe with my protein powder in the morning, I might have a few eggs or sometime in the afternoon, um, I might have a little bit of yogurt with some fruit. Uh, 260 grams of yogurt would be 25 grams of protein. So one, two, three, four um, portions of this. And I would, I would have got my protein in for the day. Uh, it's just a little example so you can refer to it. Let's look at vegetarians as well. So it says, there's a little note down here, guys. Please be careful of the calorie content of some of these vegetarian sources of protein. Getting 50 grams of protein from peanut butter would cost you, me, almost 1,200 calories. So if you're on a weight loss diet, obviously consuming a lot of peanut butter, there's a lot of calories in peanut butter. So although you're getting protein, you're not necessarily, uh, you, you, you're consuming a lot of calories in the process. So just be careful when you're choosing vegetarian sources of protein. 
um, as they can sometimes be quite high in calories and it works against a weight loss diet um, when we're trying to consume enough protein. But basically you've got some uh, vegetarian sauces here guys as well. Um, you've got it, so again like quin quinoa, 180 grams of quinoa has 25 grams of protein but it also has 600 calories uh, which is quite high. Um, but yeah, basically, guys, that's uh, that's the one, uh, that's the slide there for vegetarians. So all of these portion sizes contain 25 grams of protein for um, a vegetarian diet. Now, if you don't want to get too consumed with numbers and um, sit, sit, sitting down and working out your equations and things like that, there is a really simple way to work out how much protein um to get in per day if you don't want to sit down and weigh all your food and uh, and get too lost in these in these numbers weighing out your food and things like that throughout 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 the day some people really don't have the time necessarily to do that and also it's not always um, that healthy to do so to get really consumed with numbers basically we can look at this here and we did discuss this at the beginning of um, of our course we can use the palm technique here so basically three to four times per day if you ate a palm sized piece of protein you're going to be pretty much there people's palm sizes and hand sizes are different they're, 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 they're different sizes so mine would be different to um, a friend of mine um, versus a client so your palm is quite individual to you so if you're a smaller person, you'll, you won't need as much protein as a bigger person. So your palm, and your palm would be smaller than a bigger person. So if you look at this here, um, basically, as I say, a palm sized portion of protein three to four times a day, and you'll be absolutely fine. And that is that. It's really simple. Um, thank you for listening. If you do have any more questions, um, please don't hesitate to ask. And if you want to know a little bit more, um, please ask that as well. Uh, I hope that this has answered some of your questions. Thank you for listening and I'll see you very soon. Bye.